Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm back with a video, and this video is going to be an introduction to waveguides. Uh, so, what are waveguides basically? Waveguides are nothing but a transmission line. Uh, they are transmission line. You can think of it like a normal piece of wire. And so, just like we have a normal piece of wire, we have different type of wires like coaxial cables. Then we have shielded pair and shielded pair. They are all different kind of transmission line. So these waveguides are also in a category of transmission line, uh, but they are just made out of metal. So if you can hear this, they are just nothing but a piece of metal and they are hollow. Sometimes they are hollow, sometimes they have an internal structure. If you can see, these are just hollow piece metal, metal uh, wire, which we use that as a transmission line. So uh, a piece of wire to connect to send signal from one place to another place. Where do I use them? Um, application for these waveguides are where you need to uh, transmit higher power, higher powers. So for example, if you if you want to transmit, if you have a radar that is operating at 18 gigahertz, let's say hypothetically speaking, and you want to send a signal that is in terms of kilowatts because you want to cover several hundred nautical miles or probably a thousand nautical mile that's where these comes in because when you have high power which is in terms of kilowatts of power that you're injecting uh, you need a reliable piece of wire uh, a wire that is made out of metal uh, so it can handle that much of power so think of it like as being a transmission line but but for higher power now these transmission line uh, definitely if you were to look at this waveguide this is rectangular waveguide because it's, it is forming a rectangle, a, a rectangle. Uh, you'll also have a circular waveguide as well, but these rectangle waveguides are quite popular. So these are sort of like pipes which you can connect them with different assemblies. Like for example, if I have, if I want to connect with this guy, I want to connect this, which is a six dB attenuator. I can just simply connect it like this, and of course. Uh, in, in my case, I have a clip like this. I can just simply clip it and just, so now this is connected. You can do it for both of these sides. Just put a clip there. Now you have this piece of wire which is connected to a 6 dB attenuator. Now, as compared to a waveguide that you have seen, which looks something like this, which was not an attenuator, that is hollow. There's nothing inside. But as compared to a 6 dB attenuator, you can see the structure inside of this that looks something like this. It's not completely hollow. This thing has some, some extra structure that is making it 6 dB, that is providing 6 dB attenuation. This is tough. So we're making a change in, in the geometry of this, but uh, the dimension remains the same inside of this. Uh, a waveguide, uh, we're introducing some extra geometry based on that. Your uh, it is giving us 6 dB or 30 dB of attenuation, and of course, you have a famous horn antenna that also get right. You can just connect your horn antenna like this, put a clip here, uh, and just simply connect your horn antenna. Here we go. So now you have a 6 dB attenuator and horn antenna assembly. Uh, there are a couple of things you need to know about waveguides, especially for rectangular waveguide. Uh, the geometry is very important and there are two parameters which are very important. The geometry of the waveguide itself and the parameter called M and N. M and N are called modes. So for example, uh, for TE, transverse electric MN. So these are the modes that it can support. So by having a mode of 1, 0, TE 1, 0, this is basically telling me this is the basic mode. This is the basic mode uh, for these transmission lines, for these waveguides that are rectangular in shape. Um, so basically what that represent is this, this one in front of M and N. Okay, first of all, let's look at it. So this, according to this diagram, according to this diagram, we are calling this guy A. This is A and this height is actually B, all right, as per the diagram in a rectangular uh, uh, waveguide. So I'm calling this A, A 
is the width, A is the length, and B is the width. All right. So now having a mode of M and N, basically what I'm saying, let's say if I have a TE mode of 1, 0. All right. When I have a TE mode of 1, 0, what I'm saying is this, that in this, in this, in this part, in this part, on that length part, I have a one half of cosine is present. So if I were to draw it, it would be half of my cosine is present. Now, when I have this TE mode to be TE two zero, that means I have one and I have two of these guys are present. So one half and the other half, two, two half of of cosine is present. So if I have this mode to be 3, then I'll have 3 of these guys present. All right. And same thing here, also one half, but this is going to be now instead of having it on horizontal axis, these things will be present on your vertical axis, which we are calling it B and which we are calling it A. So once you know which mode you want to know, you want to also know based on this mode, what is the cutoff frequency is being supported by this waveguide. That you can easily compute using this formula. This is a very famous formula. Uh, okay, so what you need two things. Let's say I want to find out what is the cutoff frequency if I want to have TE10 mode, transverse electromagnetic 10 mode. Let's say I want to find out. So what is the thing that you need to do? You, you know that in place of M, I'm going to use 1, and in place of N, I'm going to use 0, but I need to actually look for A and B. So A is this guy which is the longer part, which is the length part, and B is this guy. So what are you going to do? You're going to take your ruler or you're going to take your scale, then you're going to measure it. So as per my measurement, this is somewhere around 2.4. Yes, 2.4. So M turns out, oh, sorry, A turns out to be, so this is about 2.4. 2.4 centimeters. All right, let me just move this up. This turns out to be 2.4 centimeters. Now I need to calculate my B, which is right here. So in order for me to calculate my B, I'm going to use my ruler and I'm going to look at my B. So that B turns out to be so around, around 1.1 centimeters, around 1.1 centimeter. So this turns out to be 1.1 centimeters. Plugging all of these things in, I would know what is the cutoff frequency for this waveguide. So only two things you need to know. It's actually the dimensions. So you can just easily pick up the dimension from your waveguide if you have a physical waveguide. Or you can also look at the data sheet for this waveguide. Wave, wave Every waveguide has a data sheet. You can either look at the data sheet or you can have just physically uh, find out what is the value of A and B and based on that plug into the formula and you can easily take out what is the cutoff frequency for this particular transmission line. Uh, you can connect horn antennas. So so where do I use them? So we want to, uh, so it's good when you have higher power, when you're working with higher power circuits and how about higher power transmission. Uh, so these are good, but they tend to get very bulky. So if I were to connect this part as well, this already about a half a kilogram of weight by just connecting three components and imagine if you have to connect it uh, so um, so it gets quite heavy uh, so but they are quite good for higher power application and they and, and, and as I told you before these horn antennas uh, they actually quite uh, they complement really really good uh, with a parabolic dish so if you want to have higher transmission and a very thin beam width and uh, uh, so you can you can use what you use one of these guys to actually uh, uh, transmit your signal. So I hope you like this small tutorial on a waveguide. And if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel.